Hi guys, I just thought I would talk to you this morning. Um, we got some parsnips we're going to work on. I got some carrots. Some rugaboogies here that we're going to do here. Get them canned up also. And when you're going through your grocery bags, make sure you go through every bag because I had uh, my Philadelphia cream cheese in with my root vegetables. And um, thank God I threw them in the refrigerator, otherwise this would have been ruined. So... This is going in the freezer. Got some pumpkins we're going to do up. And uh, yeah, I'll be back when I get to the cutting. All right, guys, in the process of doing this, I'm actually learning how to film also. So you're going to have to put up with weird angles and all this weird shit. Uh, all right, we got parsnips to do. Pumpkins are going to cut up and put on the pan gonna can some carrots I think I'm also gonna dehydrate some of those parsnips Bev over at uh, our half acre homestead told me that we can do the same as carrots so I'm gonna do some of those up haven't done, done them in a long time we're the biggest the same way do these up for th uh, Thanksgiving and uh, yeah I'll bring you back when I'm cut up Oh, sorry, one other thing. I am going to keep my peelings in here for vegetable broth, and then I'm going to put the uh, everything I cut into here into cold water to keep it from turning colors or anything. They actually peel like carrots, too. Now, my grandmother used to swear by these. She loved them. And uh, I had actually forgotten about them until I was watching Bev's channel, and um, she had them there. And I was like, ew, because I'm trying to eat healthier and cook healthier for my mom and I. Uh, like I have said previously, I moved back into the house, what, 2000, late 2018, right before COVID. And then I ended up having uh, lumbar surgery, cervical fusion, uh, all that fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm just finally starting to feel healthier again and being able to do stuff. And I have the ability to be able to can. I know how to dehydrate. My only issue with it is that through my years of alcoholism, I've sort of fried my brain. And, um, a lot of it, I need, like, a trigger to remember something. Uh, like, either a smell or a sight or, I don't know, a key word. And then all of a sudden, that memory will come flushing back. Uh, I was drinking quite a bit. I mean, when I went in the ER and that, I was way, I was lethal. Um, and... I ended up almost damn near wet brain if I didn't have the makings of it or the start of it. And so I guess that affects the frontal cortex or whatever. And that's where my memory is. So I remember a lot, but some of the stuff has been burnt out. And uh, just got to relearn it. I started watching the YouTube channels and everything and learning from everybody else and being stuck here at the house on uh, disability and everything while you're healing and getting your surgeries and everything it's sort of hard to go back to work until you know definitely that everything's gonna work because it took what damn near a year and a half for me to get disability now that was a year and a half with no income if I didn't have mom and I didn't have the kids and everybody to help me out, I have no idea what I would have done. Honestly, I really don't. Because keep your family close, guys. You know, I'm not saying, you know, there's some people, their family, you know, don't keep your family close, keep your friends close. But if you've got a good family and for some reason you're not agreeing with them, maybe you need to check yourself. And that's what I should have done. I should have checked myself because I was getting way out of line. But anyway, so I'm back here with mom. And I'm trying to get us to eat healthy because she's getting older now and being retired. 
Uh, I keep missing the ball. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'm trying to get her to eat healthier too. Uh, we have an anxiety ridden family. Gut issues, uh, heart issues running the family, all that stuff. So I'm sure that'll be included in our talks. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just figured I'd talk to you a little bit while I was doing this. So uh, I'll be back in a little bit once I get some of these cut up and we'll put them in jars. Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a slight hint. See how like you're on a, a table like this and I, you got slippery slideys? Take one of your yucky rags, and I know I can't swivel the thing quite yet, but go over to your sink and just dampen it, get it a little bit wet. Then, if you put it underneath here, you're not going nowhere. Back to cutting. Now, I'm going to cut these and try to get them a uniform size here. I want them on the bigger side because I'm not going to mash them. I plan on mixing a couple jars with the carrots and the parsnips because I want to cook, uh, combine them together. A couple of pint jars. Um, but yeah, you just try to get everything pretty much uniform size. That way, uh, when you're canning them, they don't turn to mush. You cook it all the same time. Uh, if you noticed, I don't really wash my vegetables to begin with. I do it at this point. Um, one, I believe you need some dirt in your diet. And two, at this point, once I put it in here, they're going to be good enough, and I don't have to worry about it. Now, as towards the skins and that, when I do my vegetable broth, is what I do with that is, um, when I get done boiling it, I just let everything settle. And then I just slowly, uh... Pour the stuff out and the dirt settles down to the bottom so you really don't need to strain it I mean you can if you want but this is the way I do stuff this is not FDA or any of that stuff this is the way I do it uh, the way I figured out I want to do it um, I'm also not somebody that's prepping for 30 years I don't want to eat something that's 30 years old I want to eat this stuff within a year next year I plan on another crop plan on doing this again. Um, plus, this way I am a year ahead so that if there is a bad year, I still got a little catch-up time there. But prepping for like 30 years and stuff like that, I just, you know, if the bomb's coming, I'm running to be underneath it. I don't want to survive, you know? Um, other way. Anyway, I'm going to finish cutting this up and uh, we'll be back. All right, guys, here we go. All right, now I gotta get the pressure canner going, which I wasn't even sure whether I was gonna use again, but it seems like I'm going to have to. So we need to put our, uh, what is it, three quarts of water in the pot. Then I am going to fill the jars up with the carrots and the turnips. Um, there's one. Don't need another half. Or the nippers, as my grandma used to call them. And we'll get them in there. Now, I do a cold pack. I don't do a hot pack on this. I'm not quite understanding why everybody heats everything up. I mean, some things I understand, but like carrots and that, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure on that one. Um, always make sure that you put 
some vinegar in your pot. Again, I know some of the FDA guidelines and stuff like that, but I don't necessarily follow them. Uh, the other thing, too, that I'm not quite sure a lot of people would know, but you can actually take the dial off of your pressure cooker, and then you can put it back on, and that way it can be washed thoroughly. And you don't have to worry about, like, knocking the thing off. All right, you know what? I think I'm going to have to pause this so I can get this back together here real quick. Hold on. I did want to say one thing, though, guys, that I found this year. Make sure you take your jars and put them on a flat surface and, like, make sure they don't wobble. I um, had more fails this year from the ball jars than I did from um, the actual ball lids. So just make sure they don't wobble. I ended up throwing out four jars. Well, I mean, not throwing them out. I used them for um, for dry goods now. But uh, yeah, knowing that they're not gonna seal. Uh, so just make sure you do that. I am going to take my carrots and fill the jars up. Probably put a half a teaspoon of Morton salt in there. Add water, and uh, I will be back once I'm done filling these. The other t thing, too, folks, when you're filling these, don't be afraid to, like, give them a good bang on the counter and, like, wiggle them around a little bit. Get that stuff down there, especially if you're doing a raw pack. Plus, this, in turn, will let you know whether you got a crappy jar. Well, besides the thing I said before about it being, like, uneven on the thing there. See, now that one I think I got too full. Yeah. Get things to settle down to the bottom. We want them down to the bottom. Hey, see, things go flying in this kitchen. You never know what the hell's going to happen. Excuse my language. Yeah, I do that too. I swear quite a bit. Sorry about that if it, if it, if it, if it offends anybody. Um, I don't know whether I got enough for another jar or not. I'm getting a little full on these. In fact, I want to take a couple out of there. There we go. All right, let's see. Do I get one over here? I clean these and put them back in there so that I don't have to do it in front of you guys. Uh, actually, let's bring this over a sec. These may be for dinner tonight. I don't quite have a whole bunch of that. Yeah, I have a feeling this one's gonna be for dinner. Yeah, we'll save that one for dinner, I think. In fact, if we're going to do that, let's take a little bit more out of here. Oh, garbage man is coming, so you might have the dogs barking. Not quite sure. Maybe they'll be mellow. Let's see here. I want to make sure these seal good, so I don't want them too full, you know. Just keep moving them around. Get them to fit. I mean, they're going to boil down a little bit anyway, but you still want to make sure that you have that somewhat of the head space. Um, then we need a half of a teaspoon. Where's my half a teaspoon? There we go. All right, now, keep my Morton salt lid separate there. All right, we're, now I'm doing pints, so I'm putting a half a teaspoon uh morton canning salt in each of them so that uh i don't know i like having a little bit of taste so i i'm i'm weird like that now when my legs start swelling up and everything then we'll talk but as of right now that's it um all right i'm gonna fill these up with water and we'll be back 
Okay, like I said, I'm still learning how to video all this stuff and everything. It's saying I can't zoom in, so I'm going to try to show you how I do this. So what I do is I put it like halfway full. All right. Then I take it and I go around like this to get some of the bubbles out. Then I fill it up the rest of the way. Now I'm not saying I still I don't still debubble, because definitely if you're doing a raw a raw pack, um yeah no I forgot to do it on that one. See now it's a pain in the butt. Uh, if you're doing a raw pack, you definitely need to debubble. But I've been trying to do this method because it seems like if you do it when it's halfway up, you get a lot of the bubbles out. I don't think you could do this on um, a hot pack because it would be mushy and you wouldn't be able to get a lot of it. But I don't know. It seems to be working right now. Well, I'm going to finish doing this and I'm going to actually use my uh, thing and I'm going to debubble. Everybody knows you just you take the stick and go down the side. And we just want to move it a little bit. Get all the bubbles out. Make sure she's back in there good. But anyway, I'm going to go finish these. And um, I'll be back again. Alright, I got them filled with the water. They've been debubbled. I am now wiping the lids. And, uh... Yeah, see, they're right there. There's the lid that's can try to bend them to see if you can get them to work. Um, anyway, I am not one person to uh, make sure I have a canner full to do because I have had the back surgeries and the neck surgery, and I only do what I can. This batch is what I can for this round. I am going to get them in the canner, and we'll do this batch up. Uh, I'm going to bring it up to a full steam coming out of our little doohickey there. Let it vent for 10 minutes, and then I am going to process it for 35. And then I have two people that actually have finally calmed down. Maybe I should keep going. I don't know. I got to show you this. Hold on. This is my help for the day. The one is snoring. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I'm going to finish doing this, get these into the canner, and um, we'll be back. All right, guys. We got the jars in the canner. Now, I'm wondering how I can do this with a video with this. Does this work? Nope. I'm going to have to put it back where it was. Like I said, I'm still learning how to do this video shooting thing here, guys. Just Okay, so if I go like this, yeah. Okay, anyway, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you look through this hole here. Like, look through it and make sure that it is open. Uh, make sure this, your little flapper here works. And then other than that, you really don't need to worry about a pressure canner. I was really afraid of them too, until I did it a couple of times and then I get used to it. And it's somewhat easier. But, I am going to put this on high. We're going to get this thing a rocking and get her boiling. Once uh, steam starts coming out of here at a steady stream, I'm going to let it vent for 10 minutes. After that, I have my 10-pound weight. Uh, check your elevation. This is uh, The only thing with pressure canning is this sort of is precise. 
uh, check your elevation, make sure the poundage that you need and everything that you need to do. I am going to process these for 35 minutes and I will bring you back when I'm done. Oh wait, what am I doing? Keep that off. What are you, crazy? Once she starts rocking, I turn mine down to four. Um, that's where she keeps a nice steady rock going. Um, I'm going to let this process for 35 minutes here. Oh, wait, down. And then we'll be back. Okay, our timer is going off. We're just going to turn our burner off. And we're just going to let it cool off on its own. You don't touch the canner, you don't do anything until everything, the dial goes down up to zero and this little button drops. Then you can open it up and when you do, you always turn it away from you. Like open it away from you. Like this, sorry, couldn't see my hand. Go like this and bend it back that way. Let the steam go that way because you don't want to get it in your face or you're going to get it burned and that's going to hurt and you don't want to do that. Okay. You have no idea how I have a camera ring. I hope it stays there. Anyway, our little doohickey went down. So uh, that means that the pressure's down. Dial uh, is all the way down to zero. We can take this off. Uh, you always want to open it away from you, okay? Otherwise, you're going to get a face full of steam. There we go. Alright. Place our little thing somewhere else. Yeah, look at that. Now well, my only thing is is I need my thingies where to go. There we go. Ah. Alright, guys, I wanted to take you from start to finish. Here you are. Now, some of them I lost some space in them, you know. I did not have any siphoning from the looks of it, which is good. I have issues with that with my pressure canning. I don't know. I think it was because I had my little uh, gauge on the top rocking too fast. Uh, but she seems to be doing good now. They look good. I pretty much always do pints, guys, because it's just me and mom. And, um, you know, I don't really need much more than that. Now, I did do some quarts of spaghetti sauce in that because my daughter, um... Well, her and her boyfriend are trying to find some place to live, but the housing market, the way it is, she's sort of living over with him at his parents, but her stuff is here, so she stays here every once in a while. But anyway, that's why I did quarts of the spaghetti sauce. Um, But yeah, these are done. We'll wait to see if we get pings. I think they already all pinged, honestly. But yeah, that was carrots. And parsnips and with all the video editing and that it's probably gonna be about it for me for the day I may videotape uh, making up the roast beef I'm gonna have for dinner but uh, yeah I got to edit all this together and figure out how to put it all together and all that stuff yet so um if we don't get in touch later on y'all have a good night and stay safe Seriously, you guys, you have no idea. I can't even get it out.
Not much. How you doing? Oh, glad to be home. There you go. Just got done filming. All right. Now I gotta see if I can play on my computer and figure out how to splice everything together and how to like make it all like you know. Well, there's a video editor thing that you can use.